Dumnezeu să binecuvânteze pe fratele Dani și pe sora Eliza și adunarea întreagă să simtă în această dimineață binecuvântarea lui Dumnezeu. Este o zi plină de soare și de bucurie aici în, în adunare și credem din toată inima că în sufletul mirelui și a miresei E o zi însorită, chiar dacă afară ploaie, ceea ce dă valoare și bucurie este Domnul Isus și bucuria acestei sărbători. Avem o căsătorie în adunare, o slujbă de căsătorie și ne bucurăm foarte mult pentru voi, Dani și Eliza. Ne bucurăm de asemenea, spun câteva cuvinte în limba română, apoi o să zic în limba engleză, ne bucurăm foarte mult pentru Dani și Eliza pentru că sunt din familii de credincioși, copii care au crescut în casa Domnului, copii pe care i-am observat de-a lungul anilor și ne produce bucurie. Dacă la nunta lor nu ne putem bucura, păi atunci când să ne mai bucurăm? Da? Deci Dumnezeu știe să răsplătească, să binecuvânteze tinerii care se străduiesc, se luptă, să rămână în casa Domnului și apoi să-și caute jumătatea, să-și caute binecuvântarea în casa lui Dumnezeu. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord for this. Sunteți un exemplu pentru ceilalți tineri și dorim din toată inima să binecuvânte Domnul întreaga adunare. Our Lord Jesus Christ um, wants us to have three homes. Three homes, a family home, a church home, and then a heavenly home. And that is so important. That's what our Lord and Savior desires from us. A family home, a home where we grow, a home where we are little children, where we have a mom and a dad and siblings and We fight and at times we cry, but still is a, is a family home. Este un colț de rai, spunem noi. Apoi, our Lord desires to have a church home, a place where we belong, where we have brothers and sisters, and then finally, a heavenly home. And I am so happy in my spirit From being a friend to Danny for a few years now, 15, 16 years, to testify this morning in front of the whole congregation that Danny and Eliza have those three homes. And beginning with this beautiful day, you will have a family home, Danny Carp și Eliza, o familie nouă binecuvântată de Domnul. And it's very important the way we behave in the church home, the way we expect and we behave in regards to the heavenly home speaks volumes into our family home. And based on how you behave so far, I have faith and confidence că o să fie o familie binecuvântată de Domnul, de Domnul. I would like to read this morning from Genesis chapter 2. This was just a short introduction. And my message will be based on Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And I would like to reread it. It was read in Romanian. Let's read it in English. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Amen. How to build a blessed marriage. How to have a blessed marriage. That's the topic that I want to speak on this morning. We live in a day and age where we have so many broken marriages. So many broken families, whether we look outside of the church and at times, unfortunately, din păcate, even in the community of the believers, we have broken marriages. And yet I believe based on the word of God that we can have a blessed marriage, not a broken marriage. 
I believe based on the word of God, on the teaching from Genesis all the way to Revelation, that we can have not only a good marriage, uh, but we can have a great marriage, a great marriage. That is possible. So please do not settle for what the world has to offer. Do not settle for what perhaps you saw in some families, a broken marriage. You can have a blessed marriage. Then the question is, how can I have a blessed marriage? And according to this passage, I propose to you, there are at least two or three steps. If time permits this morning, we'll speak about this. Number one, in order to have a blessed marriage, you need to begin with the foundation, with the right foundation. Building a blessed marriage begins with God. Genesis 2.24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And according to Mark chapter 10 verse 9, the verse that is on the screen, it was God who said that. It was God who declared this. This is God's declaration, God's intention on regards to the family. Yes, a blessed marriage begins with God because marriage is a divine institution. The Bible, the history of humanity begins with a wedding and ends with a wedding. It was Christ the Lord, it was Jesus Christ who descended, who became flesh, who became human in order to save us and to die for us on the cross. And yet his public ministry uh, started at a wedding. He blessed the wedding. But you see, the wedding is for a day. Marriage is for a lifetime. And it is God's intention to bless us for a lifetime. Yes, the right, the blessed marriage begins with God. And I know, I know that we live in this day and age where we do absolutely everything spotless, perfect for the wedding. We work hard. We buy the right clothes. We invite the right people, the family, the friends. We invest money, emotions, effort, sleepless nights. We don't sleep. We are stressed so that we will have a memorable, a good wedding. But in the midst of everything, in this beautiful day, I wonder, I wonder if we invite God in our lives. I wonder if we invite God to bless the journey. I wonder if the families that are broken around us, they have God as the centerpiece of their marriage. You would say, well, this is just old fashioned. This is something from long ago. We live in this past postmodern a society, everything is new, we invent, we emancipate ourselves, and yet I would say that the foundation stands strong. God ordained, God blessed marriage. You keep God in the marriage, you will be safe. It's as simple as that. You listen to God, you will be safe. Yes, the blessed marriage is a triangle. If you could visualize a triangle with three corners, on the right you have the husband, on the left you have the wife, and then at the center on top you have God. If they try to reach out to each other, if they try to unite on the base level, you exclude God, that's not right. We believe the right marriage is where you look towards God and as you approach and as you journey, as you travel towards God, you basically are united in the Lord. Yes, in the Bible, in so many verses, we have this wonderful truth that the Christian marriage 
uh, is between the husband and the wife, and God joined them together. God joined them together. Not necessarily social media, not necessarily the friends or the pastors or the parents. Some people need to be pushed a little bit from the back by their parents to get married. No, it is God who joins us together. If you go back to Genesis chapter 2, man was placed to live in a good, amazing environment. Sin-free, worry-free, everything was for free. Everything being perfect, right? Absolutely everything. He could have all the blessings from God. He was placed in Eden. She had then in Siamna delight, pleasure. And yet, it is God who said something is not right, something is not good. That's not good that man should be alone. And therefore, God uh, continued his work, and he blessed poor Adam <laughs> with Eve. And that was a blessing from the Lord. Yes, a blessed marriage begins with God. He is the foundation. But now let me get to the second part of my message, which is really, uh, this is the meat. This is the, 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 the core, mesul mesajului is that a blessed marriage, building a blessed marriage, you have certain fundamentals. And uh, those fundamentals are things that we are supposed to do. Okay? Brother Denny, Sora Eliza, what is it that you are supposed to do? I take it that both of you drive, right? You drive a car, BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, don't matter. Uh, you drive, that's the important thing. You get a driver's license, and oh boy, they put you to certain tests, and we failed. I failed a few times. I got it finally. And uh, it's, it's not easy to get your driver's license. You have to pass the road test, the written test, and um, my poor English 20 years ago wasn't perfect. It's not perfect now either. But anyways, I failed because they take it seriously. And I remember going to Sammamish, um, to the city hall, getting a, a marriage license. It was so easy. I mean, in Kirkland, when I went to the DMV store, they failed me. <laughs> I tried. I thought I was smart, but they failed me because getting a driver license is serious business. And yet... Getting a marriage license, it seems that it's easy. They don't require anything from you just to identify yourself. Are you over 18? Of course I am. You don't need permission from your parents. There you pay $25. You got your marriage license in three days. They said, well, three days in case you change your mind. That's the only requirement, I guess. And I got it in the mail, I guess, if I remember correctly. My wife knows better. But the idea is this, in order to get a marriage license from God, a good marriage license, what are the fundamentals? What are you supposed to do? What expectations are expected from you, from me? Because when you drive your car, you know, you stop. That's it. You need to stop. Green light means you go. In marriage, do we have any stops? Do we have any green lights? Do we have... Two-way street? <laughs> yes, we do. Let me present to you the fundamentals of a blessed marriage. Number one, a blessed marriage begins with separation. Separation. Pay attention to verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Aha! A good marriage begins with separation. I take it, I understand, separation from your parents should not mean abandonment, disrespect. You ought to love fratele Mătăsaru, okay? He's a man of God și soția lui ne, ne printuiește Bibliile, Dumnezeu să-l binecuvânteze, da? In English and Romanian. You ought to respect them. You ought to respect fratele Nelu și soția lui, sora Tincuța, da? Oameni deosebiți. But 
a great, a blessed marriage begins with separation from them. So you could unite and form your own family. But I will take it even further and I will say that a great marriage begins with this mentality that when you say I do to your wife, I do to the husband, I do to the groom, to the, to the bride, that means I don't to the rest. That means I don't to the rest. Your friends, co-workers, and on and on and on. That's a blessed marriage. Because we live in this day and age where the devil hates a good marriage. The devil hates a blessed marriage. He visualizes, he wants a broken marriage. But it is God on our side. Separation. So far you've been sailing on an ocean. Full of fish. Left and right. Front and back. And with God's help, you chose the right fish. Right now, you are sailing on the river. You are sailing on a river. It's not an ocean anymore. You have a certain direction. Yes, it's a river. It's called marriage. And God will bless you. From the beginning, we need to have this mentality. I will be faithful to my own and only wife. This is it. I do not allow in my mind room for another woman or man. Separation. I say I do, that means I don't. Number two, number two, according to this passage, the fundamentals of a blessed marriage. In order to get your marriage license from God and to have his blessing and his approval. Number two, this passage speaks about Bonding, binding, being joined together. That's what the passage says. And to be joined to his wife. Now, this is the process of a lifetime. Again, the wedding is for a day. The marriage is for a lifetime. The bonding and be joined to his wife and be joined to his or her husband. So many times uh, from my premarital counseling, and in fact not premarital but post-marital or at least marital counseling I should say, I've noticed something. This is human nature. We have this trophy mentality. Trophy mentality. The picture is a, is a great hunter. Okay, A great hunter. Uh, he's He's working on his arms. He's making sure everything is perfectly aligned. And then he checks his weather. He checks the date, the time. And he goes and he travels far into the woods in order to hunt down that deer or bear. And I love hunters because thanks to them I can eat some good meat. God bless them. And they work hard and they work hard and there is so much effort, so much energy in order to shoot that deer, that animal. Then they get it. They bring it home. And then they put it on the wall. And the same guy that worked so hard to get it passes by barely taking a look at the nice moose or deer or bear, whatever it is on the wall. And this trophy mentality, so many times it transfers, it goes into the marriage. You work hard, you are dating. You want to win her heart, you want to win his heart. And we go, we travel above and beyond. We go to great lengths in order to impress, to convince the family, maybe the in-laws, you know, maybe uh, the, the friends, maybe to just simply to win her heart. And then she says yes. He says yes, or whatever, the vice versa, the way it goes. And, and then you work so hard for the, for the wedding day. The hunter, he's working hard. He's working hard for the trophy. And then they go into honeymoon. They come back from the honeymoon. The guy feels like, a, like the hunter, 
Uh, typically, it's the guy. Okay, sorry, Danny, you're my friend, you're my buddy, I love you, you're my brother in Christ. Um, typically, it's the men that do that. They got it. They have the trophy now. And they barely, they barely take a look. They put it somehow on the wall and they rest assured. That's it. I said I do. And I mean, it's done. Paying attention to this passage, you are supposed to be joined together with your wife, Denny. And that is a process of a long lifetime commitment. As I want to conclude this morning, according to this passage, number three, the fundamentals, it talks about unity, oneness, and they shall become one flesh, united in love, united in love. Let me read something to you from Ephesians chapter 5. This is a really good passage. It's something that ought to be memorized by all of us. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. It's not easy to be united. It's not easy at times to be joined together and to stay together. The two shall become one. And I believe that the greatest impediment, the greatest barrier, the greatest culprit in this process of becoming one is self-centeredness. We focus on ourselves. It's all about me. Remember this. Marriage is a covenant. It's not a contract. Because people that believe that marriage is a contract, they're going to look for their rights. What is my right? I'm going to stand up for my right. But people that view marriage as a covenant, they will look for their responsibility. What is my responsibility to make this marriage work? Work. Being united together in love. And the greatest impediment is self-centeredness. This is why, according to verse 25, we are told that the supreme, the greatest example for us is to love our wives, to love our husbands, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Jesus Christ loved the church. Let me ask you this. When Jesus loved the church, was the church perfect? Was the church perfect? No. According to verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her. Aha, the church was at times dirty. It needed to be cleansed, to be sanctified. And verse 27, that he, Jesus Christ, might present her to himself a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And the picture is clear. Christ loved and loves the church, but the church is not perfect. And this is the supreme example for a blessed marriage. I'm supposed to love my wife. My wife is supposed to love me, but I'm not perfect. You just need to ask my wife. She won't tell you, by the way. But she will just probably approve. Yeah, he's not perfect. But we make it work. We stick together. Yes, united in love. Let me tell you something. I got a great advice. And I, it worked. So far it worked. And it might work for you, uh, hopefully. <laughs> it will. I'm f convinced, 100%. In order to have a blessed, a good marriage, you need a good wedding. And you need two good funerals. You need to die to yourself, Danny. And Elisa, you need to die to yourself. To your desires. I need to die to my old man. So many times we say something like this, I will love you to death. I will die for you, right? I will die for my wife. I love her. 
In a heartbeat, I don't even have to think about it. I will die for my wife. But do I desire to die to my own pride? Do I desire to die to my own selfish ambitions? Do I desire to die to my self-centeredness? It's all about me, my desire. I have to be fulfilled. I have to be happy. I have to be joyful on the back of the expense of my poor wife. Is that the mentality? Yes, I propose to you that a great marriage begins with a good wedding and two funerals. Dying to ourselves. Dying to ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we shall end. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become just like a sounding brass or a noisy cymbal, a noisy musical instrument. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and though I have all the faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. The marriage that has no love, sacrificial love I mean, not the love that Hollywood produces. Not the love that movies produce. Not the love that the world, the society will offer. No, the sacrificial love according to the Bible. If we don't have it, that marriage is nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. Love thinks of no evil. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And look at verse 8. Love never fails. This is the best insurance that you can have for your marriage. We have insurance for the home. We have insurance for the house. We have health insurance. We have all types of insurance. The best insurance according to your, the Bible for the marriage is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Love never, never, never fails. Stay in love. Keep the flame burning. And God shall bless you. Amen.